So now let us briefly look at weight rules. And I'm saying briefly because, because after all, they are just generalizations of cardinality rules. And actually we dug pretty deep into cardinality rules and things just work analogously with weight rules. Uh, but well, let's just see it, right? So I won't go in that much into detail now. Now, a weight rule it looks more or less like a cardinality rule, right? So we have an atom in the head, we have a lower bound on a set of now weighted literals. And now we don't have only literals like positive and negative ones. Each of them has a weight. And these guys together are called a weighted literal. And the weight is more, more or less an integer, right? That you can adjust, that you can attach to a, a literal. And now instead of just counting the satisfied uh, literals, we actually look which um, literals are satisfied, take the corresponding weight and sum them up, right? So instead of just counting, we now sum up the associated weights. And that's all more or less concerning weight rules. So here it's, is again the informal meaning of such a rule, right? So we may add the head of the rule to the stable model. If the sum the sum, the sum of weights of all satisfied uh, literals is greater or equal than the lower bound L. I think this is pretty straightforward and I don't think it's um, worth losing so much about. And again, all the techniques that we have seen, the counter and, and, and adding upper bounds, putting things in the head, all work anal analogously. And that would just be pretty technical, hence I will skip all that and just leave it to your imagination or to the li uh, research literature on that. Okay, anyway, so what else is there to say? Well, in the same way, as I said before, that uh, uh, weight rules are generalizations of cardinality rules. Here, this is more or less, one can make this precise when one actually says that a cardinality rule is a weight rule with weight one. In this way, we could have saved ourselves from looking at cardinality rules and just look at weight rules. But I'm afraid cardinality rules are still a little bit easier to understand. And in the same way, we then have uh, not only cardinality uh, constraints, but also weight constraints, right? So with lower and upper bounds. And in fact, they amount to constraints on count and some aggregate functions. And this is, again, I don't want to detail that that much. We will come to that a little bit later. Is after all, what we do is we look at sets and then we apply a function on the set. Either we do a count or we do a sum. And these are called aggregate functions. We aggregate, the, uh, we, we aggregate more or less several elements and then apply a function on it. And the result of applying this function is then compared with the lower bound. And all this more or less is left under, underneath the hood with this notation. But at the end of the day, here we are uh, looking which elements are satisfied and then we apply a sum on the weights. And this is left implicit here. So just already to tell you that there is still a level of detail that we have not entered uh, so far. And actually, in, I don't think we will enter this really in depth in the course. Okay, so here's last but not least an example of a weight constraint that may again appear in the head or in the body. And the idea is depending, so we may, we may actually select courses and each of the courses gives us a credit. Here, a database gives us four, AI gives us six, XML gives us three. And we have to achieve uh, at least five credits and at most 10 credits. And so what happens is depending on, on which courses we, we select, the corresponding literals are satisfied by the stable model and we get the corresponding way. So let's, let's assume we take um, a databases and XML and we do not take uh, AI. This means we get this guy is true and this guy is true. So we get three and four. This is seven and this lies between five and 10 and we are good. Our weight constraint is satisfied, right? And, be, and again, also with, 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 if this weight constraint in the, is in the head, you could then actually also derive the corresponding atoms, but not the weights, right? Good, so these are weight rules. Next, let's look at conditional literals. 